how do I use V0 to build apps faster, write cleaner code, and stay ahead of the curve, all while delivering features that impress my team? Well, I maximize the full potential of V0 and don't just use it for generating code and fixing bugs. Here are six things you can do to take full advantage of V0 and supercharge your productivity. The first thing you can do with V0 is to convert your images to code. And this is especially great for converting design mockups into working components or recreating UI elements you've seen somewhere else or quickly prototyping from hand-drawn sketches. And let me show how that actually works. So here is an image that I just drew by hand on my notebook about the landing page, which has this hero section with the company name and learn more button. Then we have some logo up top at the left, and then we have home and pricing links. And this is supposed to be the dark and light team switch. And then we have a pricing section with a couple of tiers. So this is pretty basic, simple uh, mockup of a landing page. And let's say I wanted to code this. Well, I can just take this image and put it in V0 and ask it to create a landing page from this image. So let's see how it did. All right, so right here, you can see my prompt. I just said, can you build the landing page UI based on the sketch? And as you can see, it did a pretty good job. We have the top nav over there with the links and the logo. Then we have the hero section and the pricing section over here. And it even came up with these things for its plan for us, because in the image, we just had these squiggly lines over there. So we didn't have anything written there, but the V0 came up with some features for our different plans. So this is a pretty good starting point for me to start tweaking this page. And only thing I can see it missed was the icon over here. So I meant it to be this toggle, team toggle switch, but we zero interpret it as an user icon. But that's okay, because this is a great way to demonstrate the second thing that you can do with we zero, and that is to use the select tool. So if you type in to the chat your prompts over here, they will be concerning the whole application. And of course you can say like modify the pricing section font, for example. So it will probably understand that you want to modify the pricing section, but much easier and more efficient way to modify just some part of the application is to use the select tool. And you can use it by clicking up here, the select, and then selecting the element or component you want to uh, run your prompt towards. So let's say we want to change this to the team selector. So I'm going to click that and then type in my prompt over here like this. So change this to a toggle that toggles between dark and light team. Let's run it. Okay, so it's finished now and looks like it changed the icon over there and it did some team changing over here. So we have now a black page. So let's see if it actually works to toggle. So if we click it, we get the uh, light team and then if we click it, we get the dark team again. So looks like it didn't only change the icon, but it did change the functionality. The third thing you can do with V0 is to modify existing components. And let me show you how to do that. So I'll open up a new chat. And what I can do is paste in my component over here and then ask V0 to do some modifications for it. So for example, I have a client component that does some data fetching and I want it to be a server component. So I can type in the following like this. So please refactor this client component to server component. And then I can just paste in my component code. So quick look into the component. There is some uh, data fetching happening and use effects used for fetching the data. And then we are returning the data and displaying it over here. So we don't have to go much deeper in there, but you can see it's a client component. It uses the use client. And of course it uses some client side features like use state and use effect. So now let's execute this and see what we zero comes up with. All right. So it looks like the component is working. So it's fetching all this data from an API, but let's see the code. So over here is our component. And as we can see, there is no use client. So this is not a client component. And let's see what else is here. So we have a data fetcher component, which renders the uh, data that we are fetching. And the fetching is done over here like this. And you can see that we are not using any use state or use effect anymore, but we are using code that is run on the server. So that easily we have 
a server component out of a client component. So of course, this is just one option you can do to convert from client component to server component, but you can do anything you can think of. For example, uh, pasting in your component and asking we0 to add some dark team and light team support for it. For example, whatever you can think of, you can try it out. But the main thing is that you can just paste in your component there and ask we0 to make the modifications. And the fourth thing you can do with we0 is to use Node.js executable blocks. And what are those? Well, basically they enable you to run some Node.js code in v0. And these are great for, for example, demonstrating API interactions, processing and transforming data, prototyping server-side logic, and exploring NPM packages. So in order to use them, you need to add three of these, I don't know what these are called, but these kind of hyphens, I guess. Uh, the ones you would use in Markdown or GitHub, for example, when you want to insert a code snippet. So then you type in JS and type equals node.js like this. And then on the next line, you can write in your code. And now just to demonstrate, I'm going to console log something. Let's make it easy. Like this and let's hit enter. So it opens up the code over here like we are used to, but now we have this run code button down here and we can click it and it runs the Node.js code. And of course, this is just a simple example, but we could ask it for, for example, to test out fetch requests with an API. So let's do actually that like this. So let's just ask it to make a fetch request for some blog posts. I'll execute it like this and it creates the function for me, fetch blog posts from the JSON placeholder to be code API and then calls the function over here. And now let's try to run it. Looks like the console logs are working. So it's printing what it fetched over here. And now we, if we want to test out this API to see what kind of data it returns or how to work with this data, it's super easy over here. Just modify this code and click the run code button. The fifth thing you can do with V0 is to create a slide deck demonstration of your application or component. So let me show you how to do that. So over here, I have already an application or form component ready with a couple of drop downs and a text field and then a save button. And here is the prompt that I used for generating this form. But then what I can do is actually prompt it again. And all I said was this. So create a slide deck explaining the form component and how it works. Give a detailed explanation and specs. And what it came up with is over here. So let's view that. So now we have this slide deck demonstration over here that first gives an overview of the component. Then we can go next and it shows the component in action and the structure, state management, API simulation, information, and then we have form submission, key points and everything explained, some accessibility features, responsive design, technical specifications, and a conclusion. So this is, of course, a simple form and it doesn't have much like uh, technical stuff going on, but I've actually done this for more complex applications and projects I've been working on. And it creates super handy, uh, this kind of slide deck and explains all the features that the application has and how to use them. So uh, this is basically what I would recommend doing if you want to onboard some new developers for a project or component or that kind of stuff to just generate this and have them go through it to more easily understand the existing code. And then the sixth thing you can do with V0 is to use it as your accessibility auditor. So you can ask V0 to audit or improve the accessibility of your components. So let's try it out actually. So I'm going to take the, this landing page component or landing page we made in an earlier step and then just prompt it, audit this page for accessibility issues and fix them. And let's run it. All right. So now it's finished running and let's see what it came up with. So first of all, semantic HTML structure, added proper main element, footer, rapid navigation links to UL and LI. So these are all good things. Then uh, some area attributes and labeling, the heading hierarchy, we changed that and made some theme toggle improvements and 
content improvements, for example, added a month text for pr pricing for clarity. So over here, so that's good. And then some focus management. So the team toggle button now properly handles focus states through the set CN button components. So all great improvements for the uh, accessibility of this page. So I highly recommend that you give this a try. Try this accessibility auditor for your own project, own components, and see how you can improve the accessibility of your application. And these things are just a scratch of the surface what developers can do with AI. If you want to stay ahead of the curve and use AI to your advantage as a developer, without using hours and hours of time studying it, check out my newsletter. It will help you as a developer to master AI effortlessly. The link is down in the description.